Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. Hopefully you guys have all had a chance to see the first episode of Doctor Who. Since this is our first time seeing Peter Capaldi in a proper episode, most of this video is going to focus on him, but I'll be doing my top 10 moments as well as some Easter eggs that I saw, like some really notable ones, and then I'll do my review. There's also been a lot of talk about what's happening to Clara, and TV Guide even spoiled a few big things, so once I get through the important stuff, I'll address all that. But if you're finding me for the first time, I do weekly Doctor Who videos. I'm even doing a weekly giveaway while the series is running. So all you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this video. But onto the important stuff, top 10 moments. So careful for spoilers if you haven't seen the episode yet. I'll wait just a sec. Okay, ready? Here we go. Number 10, the new title sequence. I feel like this is going to be one of the more controversial changes to the show. I knew they'd change them to suit the tone of Capaldi's run, but I did not know that they were going to change them this much. There's actually a pretty cool story as to why they went with the pocket watch theme versus the time vortex that they've been using. There was a fan who made his own clockwork titles. Stephen Moffat saw them and thought it'd just be a good update. The final version they're using on the show is a little bit different than what the fan originally made. His name is Billy Hanshaw, but he's a professional graphics designer who makes titles like these for a living. But I still think it's really cool that Stephen Moffat would use something that a fan made, especially since this is going to play in front of each episode. Moffat said he felt like they were like the best new idea for the title sequence that he'd seen since 1963. And depending on how you count them, there's at least 13 different versions that they've had so far. Here's a quick montage. But on to number nine, the grand entrance. I always like that no matter what the Doctor's personality is, he always makes a grand stage entrance. Getting spit up by the dinosaur is definitely a nice addition to the deck of cards that comprise all the Doctor's first introductions. Most of what Peter Capaldi has been saying about his Doctor pegs him as like an uncaring cold Doctor, but I think that slamming the door in Strax's face just shows how funny it's going to be, despite the fact that he's going to be like the new pro-robot suicide Doctor, which is super dark. Matt Smith was really quick with jokes, but I feel like Capaldi is a machine gun. Like, he just nails dry British wit. If any of you guys from the UK want to explain the difference between British humor and American humor, please do. Personally, I think it's all about the subtle turn of phrase, just being clever and biting in a very casual way. Like Capaldi insulting everyone that walks into his field of vision, but turns out it's okay because he has gone Scottish. That was really like my favorite quote of the episode. Have I gone Scottish? Ooh, now I really get to complain. Just for reference, in recent history, David Tennant, Karen Gillan, and Stephen Moffat are all Scottish in real life too, but David Tennant did not lean on his Scottish accent whenever he took the role of the 10th Doctor. Capaldi made it very clear early on though that he would be keeping his Scottish accent just as a way to distinguish his Doctor a little bit more, and I think it's great. But number eight, Clara reacts to Peter Capaldi. What would you do if the person you love changed their face? I guess you consider that a joke about plastic surgery, but really, you know, this is Clara's first experience with a regeneration. Foster and Jenny are like a really nice analogy for what the ideal version of their relationship should be. Just loving someone no matter how they look. This scene as well as a whole lot of the episodes were super meta just because it's Clara getting used to the new Doctor and it's the fandom getting used to the new Doctor. So for most of the episode we're seeing things from Clara's perspective. When Vostra put him to sleep and Clara heard him whispering he had this really poetic speech about how utterly lonely he is. He even said it later to the robot leader. I do not expect it to make it to paradise, which is obviously just a metaphor for Gallifrey. He is utterly alone, which is why his companion relationship is so important in this series. Capaldi's doctor is more afraid than ever, which might explain why he insults people so much. Usually that's a red flag for insecurity. I tried to find a reference for the speech that he made in his sleep, you know, all the world is gray and I am utterly alone. I couldn't find a really good one other than Metaltron. I'm talking about the Dalek from series one. The Ninth Doctor had a conversation with it where the Dalek ponders its loneliness, like it is utterly alone because it thinks that all the other Daleks are dead. The Doctor also called this out whenever he was talking about the dinosaur being alone too. I think it's kind of funny that the Doctor is utterly lonely but hates the idea of hugs. It's just a really funny contradiction in his personality. I always love all the Doctor's contradictions. The hugging part seems like a very Victorian British thing to do, not being outwardly affectionate, especially in public. Which actually leads me to number seven. The Doctor is not cuddly anymore. This is actually taken directly from a Neil Gaiman quote after he saw the first episode. One of the major differences in Capaldi's portrayal as the Doctor is that he does not yearn for affection. Like when he said, no flirting, don't get any ideas. Whenever he said that, all I could think of was River Song and like any attractive female companion the Doctor has ever had. Not all the Doctors before Capaldi were flirty. It's mostly something that the show has pushed since the 2005 series began, but I guess there was also some romantic involvement during the Doctor Who movie. But the cuddly part comes all from Matt Smith, like that's all Matt Smith's thing. 
I never found it off-putting, but I was pretty new to the series whenever Matt Smith started. I didn't see a lot of the darker Doctors till later. So I think about half of you guys really love Smith, and the other half thought the idea of a cuddly Doctor was utter rubbish. I'm really excited to see how much darker the Doctor gets this series, because there are actually some moments in the episode where he gets really dark, like darker than I've seen him before. But on to number six, Clara and the Doctor get reacquainted. Totally love the banter. They seem more like an old married couple now, or like a couple of really old friends, making fun of each other without taking it too seriously. The Doctor makes fun of her vanity, and Clara makes fun of his gray hair. Both of them are saying, I really care about you, but there are all these things that I really hate about you. I got such a great Sherlock vibe from the whole episode, but the restaurant, you know, pre-capture, was a good example of a conversation Sherlock would have with Watson. Their relationship is actually a pretty good metaphor for Clara and the Doctor's relationship now. The Doctor is the brilliant, but crazy one, and Clara is the sensible translator who just interprets the Doctor's wishes whenever he gets too rude or starts speaking gibberish. There are also a whole lot more obvious references, like Foster saying, the game is afoot, and then there's murder, the Doctor has taken the case. Stephen Moffat did say that he was totally open to a Hulock story if Benedict Cumberbatch and Peter Capaldi's schedules work out. If something like that eventually does come to pass, I think it'll be done more for charity than like an actual series. But number five, the rubbish robots from the dawn of time. There were reports from a long time ago that the clockwork droids from Girl in the Fireplace were coming back. The Doctor kept referencing the episode by saying, all this sounds familiar, I've seen this before. And he even held up that logo from the Marie Antoinette. So just to be clear, the ship in deep breath was the Marie Antoinette and it was the sister ship of the Madame de Pompadour. The Pompadour was the ship from Girl in the Fireplace, so these droids are not the same ones from that episode, even though they're based on the same technology. It's a different group of robots searching for paradise. That whole idea about paradise is really interesting, and I'll mention it again later when I talk about Missy. But number four, the Doctor does not expect to find Gallifrey. This was another rule number one moment where I couldn't tell if the Doctor was lying or if he was being truthful. If you believe that Matt Smith is in there, which he is, then he's taking the long way around to get back to Galbraith, so he does expect to get home, and he was just lying. Really, I think that he was just saying whatever it took to get that robot to jump out of the skin balloon ship. Yes, remember, that balloon was made out of skin. It was also a lot of fun to see him throw immortality into the robot's face. There's no trace of you left. Capaldi cannot remember where he got his face from, like he's talking to himself as much as he's talking to the robot. He even looked at his face in the other side of that mirror that he held up. He also had that line earlier in the episode where he said, I've seen this face before, but I didn't put these lines here. I've seen a lot of theories that this is a reference to Capaldi's character from Fires of Pompeii, meaning that the Doctor could have chosen the face as a sign that he really does care, despite it being against his nature as a Time Lord. If you remember, in Fires of Pompeii, Tennant traveled back to save Capaldi's character and his family, which was against his rules, like he brought him onto the TARDIS. He cared so much that he broke his own rule, so it's possible that the explanation of Capaldi's doctor face is that he chose it to remind himself that he cares, even though he's supposed to be the not caring doctor. But the interesting thing is, is that then he kind of turns on a dime and almost says like, yes, I do have it in me to murder you to save these people that I care about. That is just like the darkest thing I saw in the entire episode. It was so perfect. We could probably spend all day talking about that one scene, but this is what Capaldi's doctor is all about. Fierce and distant, but not uncaring, despite saying otherwise. But number three, on to happier things, the new TARDIS. Whenever they started posting promos for the episode, we actually saw some bookshelves in the distance, but here we can see him sitting in a chair just like the seventh doctor. His TARDIS was made to look more like a Victorian parlor, so when Peter Capaldi's debut was announced as a Victorian episode, I wonder if there was going to be a connection. Really the changes are relatively minor, it's more of like a color palette shift. Like structurally the TARDIS is still pretty much the same. It's gotten darker, but the colors have also gotten a lot warmer, which I think is just a callback to his personality. Outwardly very dark, but still bigger and warmer on the inside. I'm sure as the episodes get on we'll see more references to old TARDISes, but I really love the round things called out. That was actually one of the funniest references from the 50th anniversary, whenever Smith and Tennant saw John Hurt's TARDIS, they were also confused by the round things. Capaldi just can't seem to remember where he put them. Just to explain that though, early on in Doctor Who's run, several of the different TARDIS consoles had the same type of round things in the background. But onto number two, phone call from Trenzalore. This got spoiled pretty early on, but I still enjoyed it all the same. Matt Smith came back to do the scene. They didn't film it during the Christmas special, or at least I don't think that they filmed it during the Christmas special. It's just a way for Capaldi's Doctor to explain Time Lord regeneration to Clara. They're all the same person, even though the faces and personalities change. Thus, no hugging. I did totally love that Matt Smith made a joke about Capaldi being way too old. Doctor Who does like the best job at making fun of itself without going too far. But finally, my number one moment, the new mystery woman, Missy. 
I am convinced this is not River Song, despite all the boyfriend talk. I know a lot of you have Ronnie theories. Moffat referred to her as the gatekeeper of the Nether Sphere, and she appears in the two-part finale, so she is very important to the series. There was also a really nice reference I saw in that garden that she was standing in. Whether or not it's the Nether Sphere, the garden looks mysteriously like the garden that Amy Pond got stuck in during The Girl Who Waited. So if you remember, in that episode, Paradise was literally a resort planet called Apalupecia. It's possible that the clockwork droid was transported there by Missy, unless it's like some sort of other place. That also made me think that there might be a thematic link to The Girl Who Waited. In that episode, the Doctor chooses to leave Amy behind to die, so does that mean that Capaldi is going to have to make the same choice? I don't think it's a coincidence that he did it whenever they were on the clockwork ship, even though he did come back for her. It might just be foreshadowing that he's going to have to leave her behind for real at some point this season, but it's just something to think about. And then there's the issue of Clara getting that phone number from the mystery woman. Capaldi even said, whoever she is, she's very keen on keeping us together. That woman, of course, was Missy, so why does Missy want Clara to remain with the Doctor? So I'm going to save a lot of my Missy theories till after we get to know her a little bit better. Hopefully she'll show up in some of these other episodes before the finale. I don't want to jump to Ronnie too soon, but clearly she has known multiple versions of the Doctor, and there are very few females in the universe that are as long-lived as the Time Lords. But let me know, what were your favorite things from the episode, and what do you think of Capaldi's Doctor so far? So, while you're thinking about that, here are a couple Easter eggs that I saw. The person early in the episode who gets his eyes stolen is Sir Dantos from Game of Thrones, which is funny given how each of those characters ended up. Then there's the sonic devices. The ones that Strax, Fostra, and Jenny used in the episode were actually designed by fans during a Blue Peter contest. My favorite easter egg was probably the scarf. Whenever Capaldi's going on about the clothes and says, I need a long scarf. No wait, that looks stupid. I can only imagine that Tom Baker laughed his ass off when he saw that. It also sounds like the doctor gave his pocket watch to the man to get those clothes, which I think is going to come back to bite him at a certain point, because the pocket watch is very important. Add to that the opening sequence, the TARDIS is traveling through all that clockwork. It's meant to show that they're traveling through time, but in actuality they're traveling through the Doctor's pocket watch. But overall I gave the episode a solid A for being a lot of fun and being so different from previous Doctors, despite reusing a lot of old Moffat stuff. Peter Capaldi said it best in the episode, I've seen this before. And let me know if you agree, but I feel like the Paternoster gang being so big in this episode foreshadows potential spinoff, even though I don't expect that to happen. I feel like the episode asks more of those characters than it has in any previous time that I've seen them. Like they're trying to show that they can carry a series by themselves without the Doctor. But so far I am totally enjoying this new grumpy Scottish Doctor and based on what Stephen Moffat has said about all the episodes of this series, I think it's going to be so much fun. Like it's going to be a big departure from Matt Smith, but I still think it's going to be a really good thing. So I did a video that actually kind of sums up all the things he said and I'll add a link to it at the end of this video. In related news, my Q&A will post this Sunday, so hopefully everyone has a chance to watch the episode or rewatch it by that time and come up with some questions. I'll also announce the winner of the giveaway whenever I post that. Remember, all you have to do to enter the giveaways is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this video. Nice and simple, and it's open to international people too. Right now you can click here to get that q and I'll add the annotation as soon as I post it. And you can click here to get my master guide for series 8, like with all the synopsis for all the episodes and everything that Stephen Moffat said. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Everybody, let's high five and then go rewatch the episode a couple times.